Hello my lovelies, welcome to the full moon in Gemini. Well I brought you to Blackberry Camp once again because I'm going to do a full moon ceremony and if you care to join me you are most welcome. It is an oak moon, the energy of this last full moon of the year, December the 19th and so I'm surrounded by beautiful oak trees, some oldies, very oldies and some even um, younger ones. So here is a, a younger version of the oak tree and as you can see it's a very foggy morning but hopefully that will shift and that will lift. I'm also surrounded by holly, so oak and holly energy, very sacred at this time of year. And I've set my altar out on a she, a fairy she, so there's a conjoining of three beautiful oak trees, triple goddess energy, as you can see, and their roots are entwined. I won't say entangled, they are entwined. bringing that energy together of maiden, mother and crone right deep down into the earth, into the mother goddess herself. So here's my little altar and I tuned in earlier on I said what would you like me to bring? So we have candles which is fire energy, we have A shell from the sea and also these pebbles they're known as hagstones and they have a hole all the way through so they're known as holy stones or hagstones and when you hold them up and look through them You can see other dimensions. So I brought five, I was asked to bring five. So first, second, third, fourth and fifth dimension. And working with hagstones is a very ancient way of tuning into that higher energy, that higher vibration where as you go through that portal into the other dimension you meet yourself or that version of yourself and as the energies on the planet are changing moving up into this fifth dimensional energy we will tend to spend more time there in the coming weeks and months and years. So as we tap into the energy of this full moon, which is in the sign of Gemini at 27 degrees, Gemini is ruled by the planet Mercury. So Mercury is the ruler of this full moon. So this is how we communicate with our other selves, our future selves, our past selves, our other dimensional selves. And that ability that we have, not just today, but from today on, to communicate with those other aspects of ourselves and also to do some healing work. Now another aspect of the energy of today, oops, is that the planet Venus has turned retrograde in the sign of Capricorn. So Venus energy is about love. Initially love of self, love of others, love of planet Earth, and love of 
love of humanity. We've been joined by a robin. Whoop, where's he gone? Flitted by. So when robins show up, it's a sign that our departed loved ones are here. I'm sure he'll show up again. So with Venus going retrograde, this is an opportunity for us to look back on old loves, past loves, but also loves from the past can come and visit. So it can be that an old flame shows up. You may not particularly want to see that old flame, but it can be an opportunity to bless it, release it and let it go. And also returning of old flames from past lives, old loves. You may have past life connections showing up because this is a very powerful time. So if you set an intention to say, well, if, if an old flame does show up, then let me release it, bless it and let it go. And or if an old flame does show up, may I heal this rift or conflict or upset between us, which allows us to move on. Now these two paintings, this is Mildreus, and he is my galactic family. So he is a collective energy of my galactic family. So he works with me and brings through advice and guidance and messages from time to time. So he wanted to come along today. And this other one, this is the green man. So he is a, an energy of the forest. He's also affiliated with Kenunos, Lord of the Forest. So combining these two energies, the phrase as above, so below. So Mildreus as above and the green man so below. And as we have set the altar out on the she, which is spelt S-I-D-H, or a fairy, a fairy mound, the elemental energies entwined here, the energy of above and the energy of below are also entwined. You cannot have a full moon, which is goddess energy, without the sun shining upon it, which is the divine masculine energy. It's because the moon doesn't have her own light and it's only with the sun shining upon her that she shows her face. I was always asked to bring the cat energy. Well, I have, you know, I have two cats, Sirius and Lyra, but they didn't, <laughs> they just definitely didn't want to come today. No, it's nice to do cosy by the fire. So I brought a representation of cat energy. So cat is our intuition. It's our knowingness, our ability to tune in just to know. We don't know how we know, but we just know. So his whiskers are a little bit wonky. There we are. So he represents the intuition which is associated with the moon and the full moon, or she represents. So again, it's a combination of that male and female energy. Although the full moon, as I say, is associated with goddess energy, the female, we have to find that balance. And so through the ages, or the eons, where the feminine energy has been put down, trodden upon, deleted in many ways, with the patriarchal energies, this is a time now for the goddess energy to return. But she doesn't want to return and dominate. She wants to be in love with the Divine Masculine and the Divine Masculine to be in love with her. So there is a, a respect. There is a mutual respect. A mutual energy bringing these two 
divine aspects of self together. And I was asked to bring bear energy. So we have baby bear and mummy bear. And I said, why do you want me to take the bears? Well, the bear energy is to do with introspection, going within, taking a bit of time out and just working on yourself, your inner self. So we know that bears hibernate in the winter and they go into a cave, into a place of safety and warmth where they can regenerate and rejuvenate and everything slows down. So their heart rate and their digestive system slow right down to barely nothing. And then in the spring, they emerge and sometimes as baby bears. So the story of these two bears I've brought, the big bear, I lived in a, in a flat in Blackheath in London many, many years ago. And when we moved in, there was a gate leg table and it had a little cupboard in it. And I opened the cupboard and there he was stuffed inside hidden away in the dark inside this gate leg table and so he had been hibernating until I found him and he's been with me 45 years something like that dear little soul I do love him I think he's a little this is merry thought on his foot and then the baby bear that was given as a a wedding gift when my sister got married, we all got a little bear. And everywhere I've been on my travels, I've taken baby bear with me. He's easy to pack and transport, and I don't need a license for him or a passport for him. But he's been to many places around the planet. So as we emerge from this time of hibernation, of going within, of that soul searching, of finding ourselves and maybe not recognizing who we truly are for a long, long time because of all the malarkey that's been going on. But this says to me, there's a, a renewal, a new beginning, a chance for us to start again. But this time in a very different light, in a very different way that others will find us unrecognisable. We'll find ourselves unrecognisable. We haven't met that part of ourselves yet. And for some people that is disturbing, it's upsetting, it's... They have to mourn and grieve for the past, for who they thought they were. But the new self, the baby bear, the new self is vibrant, it's full of beans, it's lively, full of life, full of joy, full of that excitement, that joie de vivre that has been snatched from us by those nasty dark entities. Well. This is a day for empowering ourselves and saying no more, no more. There's this energy of Gemini, which is known as the twins, Castor and Pollux, the twin energies in the heavens. And in Greek myth, they were boy twins who in so many of the Greek myths were being chased and um, wanted to be done away with by a baddie and they hopped aboard a ram that could fly. It was a magical ram and it had the ability to fly and it flew them away from their enemies 
across the sea towards safety, but sadly one of them, one of the boys, fell into the ocean and was drowned. And when his brother came to land, he was so grateful to be to have survived, but so distraught at having lost his brother, that he sacrificed the ram to the gods. And it happened to be a golden ram. So it is the golden ram of the story of the golden fleece. And it had the ability, when it was placed around a person, to bring them back to life, which takes you on then to the story of Jason and the Argonauts. So, if you want to do your homework, you can find out how the Golden Fleece was associated with him. So the energy of the holly and the ivy when they are both full grown, of all the trees that are in the wood, the holly bears the crown. Well, some people say that, I'd say the oak bears the crown. Beautiful oak energy. December, the oak moon. The energy of this moon is masculine and, as the name implies, centres around the oak tree and its many magical significances. Since this moon rises in close proximity to Yule, the Battle of the Holly and Oak Kings, symbolising the waning and New Year's respectively, comes to the forefront. It is the time when the Oak King claims rulership and brings the returning light and warmth of the newborn sun with him. But that's not all. The tree for which this moon is named also has magical value, for one thing, its trunk and branches rise high into the sky while its roots dig so deeply into the earth that they were once thought to infiltrate the underworld. This makes it the perfect illustration of equal growth on both the physical and spiritual planes, something that is necessary for personal balance. Then there's the matter of the mistletoe that grows green, lush and bountifully on the oak's branches even in the dead of winter. The white berries that form at this time of year symbolise the semen of the Lord of the Forest and remind us that life is always new, always fruitful and always constant. This particular energy is excellent for candle magic that involves strength, self-confidence, balance between the worlds, prosperity, release and beginnings. It also provides a good time to honour the birth of the sun. O mother, by your radiant glow, into my very spirit, so the balancing energy of the oak, its fires of birth within me stoke, bring its strength unto my core, give wing to confidence, let it soar and grant its rich prosperity, as I will, so mote it be. And here I have a few words given to me from Mildreus, which was in 1999, but it seems very appropriate for now. You are creatures of light. From light you have come, to light you shall go, and surrounding you through every step is the light of your infinite being. By your choice dwell you now in the world, which you have created. What you hold in your heart shall be true, and what most you admire, that shall you become. Fear not, nor be dismayed at the appearance that is darkness, at the disguise that is evil, at the empty cloak that is death, for you have picked these for your challenges. They are the stones on which you choose to wet the keen edge of your spirit. Know that ever about you stands the reality of love, and each moment you have the power to transform your world by what you have learned. You are life inventing form. No more can you die on sword or years than you can die in doorways through which you walk, one room into another. Every room gives its word for you to speak, every passage its song for you to sing. I brought along two sets of oracle cards. One is the um, the goddesses and the other is the ascended masters. And because the energy of today is a balance of male and female, 
I wanted to see which of them are with us today. So the female, the goddess energy is Lakshmi. And the male energy, the ascended master, is Krishna. And interesting that they're both Indian. So Lash Lakshmi says, stop worrying. Everything is going to be fine. So if you see the beautiful background, she has elephants behind her. And the elephant deity is Ganesh. And he's all to do with abundance and the overcoming of obstacles. Sorry, I've got a wobbly hand. And also behind the elephants is the sun coming up. So we have a bright, bright future ahead of us. And she's doing a mudra with her hands. And out of the palms of her hands, which is heart energy, is sending lots and lots and lots and lots of love. And so the male energy, as I say, is Krishna. And he says, find the blessings in your current situation. So if you're having a tough time, or your head is befuddled about things, there is a blessing there somewhere, and just allow it to show itself. Now, one very interesting thing about the Indian gods, or masters, their skin is blue. And my galactic friend here, the skin is blue as well. So what I have discovered is that the some of the Indian gods come from the Pleiades, that constellation of planets, and apparently there are three suns, S-U-N, sun, three suns surrounding the planet, so it affects their skin. So they've developed a blue pigment in their skin to protect them from the three sun's harmful rays. So I just thought I would share that with you. So on the one hand, the divine goddess is saying, stop worrying, everything's going to be fine. And the Divine Masculine is saying, look for the blessings in your current situation. So there's a very positive message in both of those energies. And to finish off with, because I have the four elements here, the fire from the candles, the earth, surrounding the trees, the air which I'm breathing, but also I've brought some water which I gathered on the way here from a running stream and it was important that it wasn't just tap water or um, water that's contaminated. So I'm going to spill the contents of this jar which is running water to seal the energies of this ceremony. I call upon the energies within this woodland grove, this sacred place with sacred oaks, the holly and the ivy on this day of a full moon. I call upon the energy of the goddess, the triple goddess, the maiden, the mother and the crone. I call upon the energy of the Lord of the forest, of Kernunos. I ask that their blessings be poured upon us all and that we surrender and release all that no longer serves us and that we find a healing from this moment on And as this fog lifts and reveals an exquisite scenario, 
so the fog is lifted from our eyes, from our sorrows, from our grieving. And our hearts are filled with joy and with love and abundance and prosperity. And we thank these energies and we bless these energies as we embrace the new and say farewell to the old. And as I pour this water from a running stream, so may it cleanse our emotions and give us the healing that we all deserve that brings us to a state of peace of balance of harmony for as I will so mote it be